In today's episode, I'll show you how to build a powerful France that will subdue the new German Empire, using tactics for which large conquests are no big deal. Along the way, you'll get the better than Napoleon achievement by conquering Vienna, Berlin and Moscow. I was also surprised by the possibility of creating a certain country as France, but more on that later in the episode. Hello imperialists, Lucas here. Alright, I know, France is one of the most powerful countries in Europa Universalis 4, especially at the beginning of the game. And with the new gigantic mission tree this country got, it's even mightier. I have to admit, it's one of the better designed mission trees and one of the most interesting ones, focusing on the conflict with the Holy Roman Empire, subduing Italy, and also touching on something related to the Kingdom of God. Now playing as France is a bit different and more interesting than what it used to be. Firstly, our rivals. In my case, it will definitely be England, Castile, no, not Burgundy, I'm going to try and ally with them at some point, even though I know they currently hate me. Now, our court. We have a cheaper administrative advisor, and initially we'll take the older one to boost cheap stability. Once he dies, we'll switch to the other one. From the diplomatic side, we also have a cheaper gene something for improving relations. And then there's the military advisor. We don't have any cheap ones here, but you know we'll get one anyway. But, but, but before we dive into the agenda, we need to do a few things related with our vassals. We have to send royal marriages to literally all of them. Technically, they aren't vassals anymore but appanage, but more on that in a moment. You appanage, I think that's how it's supposed to be pronounced. We send royal marriages because it simply makes these subjects more loyal towards us. Of course, we initially have the privileged French strong duchess, which reduces the subjugation tendency of our vassals by 10%. It also gives us three diplomatic relations, which is pretty cool. All their benefits are monarch points, cheaper loans to recruit troops, and an agenda for a cheaper military advisor, which we also have. Great. Now we'll cancel recruitment and note I'm not granting any more privileges. Because we will soon be at war with England and I'll reclaim a lot of crown land. And of course I reclaim the land. I'll modball the fleet since we won't need it at all for now. Now when it comes to our allies, we'll keep the alliance with Provence as there's a chance for a personal union with them if we maintain good relations. It probably works similarly to the Polish missions, where the higher our diplomatic reputation, the greater our chance for a peaceful union. We definitely need an alliance alliance with the Pope, and this is also related to our future missions. And that's about it for now, we can also revoke the guarantee on Scotland, or potentially form an alliance here, as it's also related to our subsequent missions, this time I'm forming an alliance with Scotland. I'll recruit the free company and do something that might hurt you to see, but I'll burn my manpower since I want to quickly complete the manpower mission. And now we have a cheaper advisor. It's also crucial that we quickly form a royal marriage and improve relations with Provence, aiming to quickly achieve those 90 trust points. Honestly, our diplomacy will really have its work cut out here. And we immediately attack England in the war for Maine, but we're the ones initiating. I know, I know, we would have gotten the reconquest CB anyway, and we could reclaim it cheaply, but the point is we need to act fast. Here, take it easy. Let our vassals or the mercenaries we bought do the sieging, of course, with the appropriate general attached. And this general the one you just saw. We need to ensure he's present in all the battles we'll be fighting, so if I can't afford to lose a battle with him, it's kind of a bummer. But no matter, he has to be in these battles because we have a specific mission to complete with him. As a result, we get three cannons in Paris. Meanwhile, let our diplomats do their job. Interestingly, our southern neighbors are at war with each other right now. This means one side will come out weakened, so it will be worth taking a closer look. Just like sometimes it's worth paying attention to battles happening within your own country, but we're beating the English. Awesome! Maybe that fortress will finally fall. Oh, it looks like we might catch the entire English army here in Calais. Well, maybe not the whole army, since they're running away. And this battle finally got us those coveted cannons. With those cannons conquering Portugal, we'll now just be a matter of a few. Actually, just two short sieges. Unless the English come back to lose more battles. The fall of Lisbon. And honestly here, I was just satisfied with taking their money. And really, now all we have left to do is wait because the war is going entirely in our favor. Especially if the opponent keeps losing their entire army every now and then. It might surprise you, but I'm also sending an advisor to improve relations with Burgundy now. And once we've improved relations with Provence, then we should now send a diplomat for Cari favors. This will give us a significantly bigger increase. And now I'll complete this mission, because then several English provinces should cost me much less. Out of curiosity, it currently costs me <laughs> 69 and now 62. Not worth it. Alright, we'll go for the following peace deal. We reclaim the entire north for ourselves. War reparations plus a lot of money. We'll reclaim Gascony later. We liberated Normandy. This duchy comes back to us, so the remaining privileges are presented as follows. And now we have the option to create the Duchy of Alencon, which is right here in Normandy. And I don't really want to do that. Oh, it might actually be good to strengthen our relations with the Ottoman Empire. And after reclaiming 
claiming the land will of course attack Burgundy for something that will be easy to take. Our goal here isn't necessarily to seize any territory, we need to ensure that Burgundy removes us from their rival status. And that won't be super easy, we'll have to engage in a few battles with them, and it's also possible that we might need to recruit a few thousand mercenaries soon, though currently I have a technological edge over Burgundy. But one has to be careful, that's why I'd rather want to advance to the fifth technology as quickly as possible. Yes, in six years, so I have to focus very, very much on destroying these smaller stacks, be it troops of allies or vassals. Actually, the Burgundians are doing the exact same thing to my vassals. It's kind of sad, really. Oh yes, excellent ministers, they'll come in handy. And great, we remove the rival, get additional war reparations. That's enough for me. Ah, and the death of those soldiers for this righteous cause. And now, after these wars, our country, to be honest, is somewhat exhausted, so we'll have to wait. But it's still a good moment because we need to wait for the death of this ruler. I hope that Maria will ascend to the throne. We now have to wait until something happens in the empire. Look for an opportunity to form an alliance with the Ottomans. It will come in handy. And soon we'll also need to address the entire HRE issue. We'll see who will be the elector in the upcoming elections. There's a good chance it might be Ansbach. Oh, and after all these wars, of course, autonomy can now gradually decrease. Granted, it will cause some revolts, but we'll manage the first government reform and it won't surprise anyone that I'm choosing taxes, as well as the first idea that I can finally pick. And no, it's going to be a rather unconventional move I'm planning here, I'm going for influence ideas. And of course my main goal here is to develop up to the third level, to integrate our vassals on the cheap. Generally I'm gonna play a lot around vassals, though they won't exactly be typical vassals. Let's also complete this mission, it will slightly strengthen my southern princes. And what's with Burgundy, not switching to a neutral stance? not switching. Yes, we did it! We did it! We have Burgundy, ladies and gentlemen, but don't ask me how it's determined, it just sometimes works out. Now, we need 180 relations with Burgundy and 75 trust points, so we have our work cut out for us. And no, I'm not taking that mission, even though I can complete the mission with Provence, because as soon as I take it, I lose the alliance with Burgundy. Interestingly, I build trust with Burgundy just as fast as with Provence. And now, how do these French vassals differ from regular vassals? It's really some kind of mix of Japanese daimyo who don't fight among themselves anymore because they just don't. Okay, and we can simply take development from their capital, we can take some general from them and so on, a few options to play with, but really nothing noteworthy, French maritime doctrine, and honestly, it's pretty cool. I'm going for it, I also need to introduce fasting in France, we also have glass in cocks after all, don't tell me I'm that unlucky. And this one time I won't have Maria. But no, wait, no, 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 there's a crisis anyway, so that decreases. We don't need Maria, so let's focus on the electors in the empire. We'll improve relations with them and soon we'll be forging alliances to dissolve the empire. Wow, every region I've already developed up to 25 points will get reduced development costs. How nice. This is actually really powerful, I just have to play as a tall France. And now we have Feisting and I've got some bad luck, Castile and England have a mutual alliance. Which isn't really surprising, since both of these countries see me as a rival. And now we have another mission, Crown Seeds of Paris. Here we get a diplomatic annexation cost reduction of 15% for 20 years and within these 20 years we'll basically integrate all the princes we have. I won't hide it. I'm kind of tempted now to take that development. But it's a dilemma, I have to go to the vassals. So, will it work on our French vassals? Let's see. Well, at 615, I wouldn't say it's worth it, and my troop limit also increased by 1000. So I'll go for the standard reliable taxes. Besides, apparently the French like it. Literally 5 more gold from taxes. So it was very worth it, very. Alright, I'm starting the integration of my vassals, naturally. Starting with the biggest ones, oh come on, this too, unbelievable. A 65% reduced cost of vassal annexation. I must say, that worked out. From 400 points to 142, let's also trigger a privilege. Oh no, my ruler died and the heir too. Oh dear, what went wrong here? Oh, we have an advisor named Jean-Claude Van Damme. Is that you? Alright, we're expanding our fleet, simply preparing it for war with England and we can expand the port in Calais. But Brabant will be upset, why should I care? And now, thanks to the efforts of French diplomacy, we can say that in a way we're securing the Burgundian event. If it happens, there's a significantly increased chance that Burgundy will choose us and will receive their land or their union. Which now means I really don't need an alliance with them anymore, so we can target Provence. And from what I see, Provence decided to unite our kingdoms, we got both Provence and 
Lorraine and Burgundy, well, 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 maybe we can manage to keep this alliance. We attack Savoy, our goal will be to take a few provinces for Provence for now, a union over Milan. Hmm, it's not necessarily a bad idea. But how to put it? There are urgent matters, and even more urgent ones. For example, conquering Naples, which has an alliance with Austria. Come on, a moment ago it was Austria. I'm devastated. But actually, this is good. This war will be much easier, even though I'll get a lot of aggressive expansion now, and then I plan to stay peaceful for about 20 years, because I need to wait for bigger nations to form here. Alright, I'm sending my armies first to Berlin to capture it, and then Ansbach, and oh, I think it would be beneficial to have reduced aggressive expansion, right? Too bad I didn't click on it 5 minutes ago. Berlin has fallen, Mainz has fallen, and Ansbach has fallen. Time to dissolve the empire, and it suits me just fine. And now the most important thing, the Burgundian inheritance can still happen, but now you have practically 100% certainty that Burgundy will be yours. Alternatively, you can take a risk and click on this mission after capturing Burgundy, then you'll get a quick inheritance of it and you'll acquire Burgundian territories for France. And after clicking face the empire, where you decide if you want to become the emperor of the empire or if you want to destroy it by necessity, we will only have the part of empire destruction. Now it's time to break all these alliances of mine and wage a war for a free Naples. Yes, we want to reclaim Naples, without a doubt, and let Burgundy assist us. See how the war has ignited in the empire. Here, everyone is conquering each other now. There's no sheriff in town, so the princes run wild. Oh my god, this second development is OP, yearly army tradition and morale 15%. I have to play as France with defensive ideas sometime. And we liberated Naples, from under Naples, however weird that sounds. Okay, Provence has to reclaim that, what don't you get? I've expanded the Papal Palace to the second level, from this mission, so you could even pull off a trick here, up to the third level, if someone wanted to. Another idea for France, and this is a very unconventional choice I'll make. Ideas, mercenary ideas, you weren't expecting that, were you? But I'm choosing it mainly. For this policy, the client state act, of course, France itself has absolutely nothing geared towards mercenaries. Burgundy, Switzerland, or the Livonian Order, they're much better suited for mercenaries, but I wanted to mix things up, playing with vassals as France, and also these mercenaries. Now, I have to figure out how to weaken the English-Castilian alliance, the future of Naples, and I think we need to keep attacking. Aragon's troops stand no chance. Oh, Charles is leading the Burgundian armies. How nice. There's a higher chance he'll die. Let's also follow the path of strengthening our relations with the papacy. Because the alternative route is not very interesting. Just a slightly faster siege of forts. Either way, we get claims over the rest of Italy. In addition, every new pope is basically more papal influence and monarch points for us at this moment. We can also create the kingdom of of Jerusalem, which will be our vassal. That's tempting. And unfortunately, during the Siege of Siena, the Duke of Burgundy dies, and ladies and gentlemen, they decided to enter into a personal union under France. It's not that they had another choice. Let's also get rid of these fake pretenders to the Burgundian throne. I don't understand. What were they trying to achieve here? I forgot about my union over Milan completely, and I think it's too late. And only now the tournament time for the French fleet to begin its domination in the Mediterranean. Ooh, Spain is burning. How nice. I think this might be a good moment to reclaim our English territories, and I'll take something from Spain as well. What's happening in Scotland? Are they selling these provinces? Seriously, because I've never seen them in the Anglo-Scottish War and half of Scotland is gone. What's going on here? And that's the end of the English army. A beautiful sight. Oh, Spain, Spain, they're making their move. We're taking this opportunity. Let Spain pay. After our victory in the war, I'm releasing Leon here and we'll be reclaiming those Castilian provinces for them in some time. I also see that Castile is now at war with Aragon, so it's possible that they'll finish off that country. That would be great. The gardens of France. Okay. Okay, I upgraded them and what will we get from this? Uh, okay, let the nobility be more satisfied. Moving on, everything still leads us to the conquest of Britain. France is simply the wine capital, and wine is the best for producing our manpower. It's practically the whole south of France. I'm building manpower buildings. I know I also have a mercenary idea. But don't worry, I'll use everything up. Oh my god, integrating each of my vassals. Minus 20 to nobility loyalty. Oh, there will be problems. Okay, now we need to secure our passage through Italy. Because honestly, this will be the best place to destroy our opponent. Don't tell me that Granada will soon gain independence here, I'm considering whether to conquer this Spain, because it's like a bank from which I can draw one and a half thousand gold every now and then. And it's very easy since I captured that fort, but how to say it, it's time to get to the Holy Land. Who am I fighting against? Oops! Wow, this military sphere in France is honestly very large. And here we got a very specific government reform from the missions. But is it that good? Probably not. I will go for not musketeers, although it looks quite interesting, and this is probably the last era, unfortunately. So for now, we'll 
will go for elite mercenaries as soon as I finish the idea, of course. In the meantime, our troops are calmly besieging here. But how? No, I can't allow Castile to fall under England. We're going to war, although the troops are not where they should be. But I really don't want to know what coalition I will get after this war. <laughs> oh, it will be fun. I won't hide. This war is a good opportunity because I plan to have three vassals here. Maybe four along with Aragon. This way I would conquer the whole of Iberia and if I already have Castile. Look is from the future. I know we don't need that many vassals now because we have a certain mission but more on that later. Just survive the upcoming coalition. I wonder my fleet has higher morale and a comparable battlefield width as the English one. Well, maybe we'll win, we'll see. Oh, the sinking of the fleet begins. Ooh, it's going down nicely. All right, that's the entire Castilian army and at this moment it bit the dust. Okay, there are still about 5,000 somewhere, but that doesn't count anymore. All right, the coalition is getting smaller and in essence, it's just one big country, meaning England, the rest don't care. So we continue to improve relations. Okay, the English fleet is in London. All right, we're blockading England with France. I've never had a battle where I sent troops like this before, really, but it's working out. I have more troops here, so it's all good. Let's go everyone, everyone. Actually, I just need to capture London, so it's all good, because Castile is already fully occupied. And great, we've established a foothold in England, so subsequent wars should be much easier, and Castile becomes our union. Most importantly, I think there is no coalition threat. By the way, we completed the mission for the Kingdom of Spain and a victory in the Franco-Iberian Wars. Wait, 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 what? Oh my god, I can now do a reconquest for Castile, for the entire Iberia. That's so powerful. And do you know what's the best part? If you vassalized Aragon, you would have a reconquest for all of Aragon. Because I just read on the wiki, this mission works for each of your subjects in this way, depending on whether the subject is Portugal, Castile or Aragon. That's OP. Well, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Wait, 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 what is mercenary militarization? WTF? Okay, we're spending some money on that, while it's still cheap. And how much is it decreasing for me monthly? Nothing. Oh, it does decrease. Okay, the higher the level, the faster it drops. The worst part is that right now, I really can't conquer because of all this. Oh my god, because I have collisions way earlier than I wanted. But I guess it's worth it, right? And actually, now we probably won't need a fleet anymore. Heavy ships, because we have a foothold on the British Isles. So, unfortunately, the entire fleet is being scrapped and with the current income we'll rebuild the trade fleet we're developing land across Britain and wow cheaper and the French crown we get 10 power projections until the end of the game it's not much but it's always nice now we can move towards the French Empire and we could now turn to the conquest of the former Empire but it's not the time yet for some reason the old Empire doesn't really want to conquer each other okay Stettin is big but the rest not so much Bavaria hasn't risen yet Bohemia is falling Poland is collapsing finally colonialism is finally here. All right, it's time to attack Portugal. I know there weren't supposed to be wars, but this is a war to reclaim our territory. So nothing wrong is happening. Obviously, Lisbon has always belonged to Castile. Wow. Oh, they had to move to that province. They just had to. Do you think I can do it? Let's try. Easy. We're beating up Angola. All right, let England do what it does best, which is financially supporting us. Well, here the green territories of the false blue Portugal have been liberated and returned to Castile. All right, time for another trip to the Mamluks. Look, we can continue to conquer these three provinces. Maybe this time nothing will stop us. And Protestantism has appeared in Frankfurt. This time we remain Catholics. I don't know if it's better. I don't know if it's worse. I just want to see it. We continue down the Crusader path. Soon we will be able to create Jerusalem. Though from what I've seen, unfortunately, we won't avoid wars with the Ottomans. Now Iberia looks quite nice, almost entirely liberated. We gain another trustworthy friend. And now we form a strategic alliance with Poland. Do I really have to fortify everything here? Oh shit! No! This always was until 1500. Why? Well, this complicates things, to be honest. Because soon we'll have a civil war. And another thing, the governing. And thirdly, I'm kind of lazy. I was really counting on Burgundy assisting me in the wars. The worst part is that now I need to move the capital to the Dutch region. To avoid a civil war. Den Haag, the new capital of France. Yeah, sounds very French. But seriously, the Netherlands is the worst place to have my capital right now. Because soon I'll be facing a coalition and attacks from every side just on this province. Since this era is nearing its end, I'm spending all my development for administrative points. It'll give me the highest possible amount of money. Because remember, everything that increases your tax income affects this number. And all the money obtained this way goes into building courthouses to make France a more stable and a lawful country, right? I hope the French appreciate it. 
Alright, we seem to have a good opportunity, because the Ottomans are in a tough war, so let's target their territory. Holy war, yes, and let's call Poland and the Papal States for assistance. Only I forgot to recruit mercenaries, my real aim is the conquest. Oh, all of the remaining provinces I need to complete this mission. I can see the Ottoman Empire is really getting serious about this war, they just doubled their army. Telling you, the hardest part is watching the AI, tracking where it goes at any given time, and ensuring I have an army nearby. Where's the Ottoman running to? We'll catch him. And now we're making a passage to the other side. We will be able to merge our troops. Oh, 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 back up. No, all right, all right, we got this. Seems like the Ottomans are broken, finally, after those losses. All right, I had twice the losses in the battle. This is a big Ottoman, it's trouble. Third idea, and here I'll also make a very non-standard choice, because I'm going for infrastructure ideas. Though I'm genuinely tempted to pick administrative, but since I'm playing this unconventional France, we'll go with it, here we get development. But more importantly, we get state governing cost, minus 10%, and two interesting policies. Well, the Ottoman troops seem to have run out of steam, and I think I managed to achieve all I wanted, that is to reclaim the remaining territories, and deeply in debt the Ottoman Empire. That's enough for me at this moment. And surely, we've gained another lifelong friend out of this. Oh shoot, okay, just checking, just checking. What will happen if I click this? But the Jerusalem is not my vassal? No. All right, I won't click it, we won't release this kingdom. So what I need to do now? For the remaining 15 years of time, which I've set aside to build up this France, it's about its development, we will get new manufacturers once we bring the administrative technology to level 11. It also requires me to tear down some churches in certain provinces, because it's much more profitable to place a manufacturer there now, just out of curiosity after the war with the Ottomans, only 7,000 in debt, I've now used edicts for conversion on these freshly conquered lands, I use them immediately everywhere. Because frankly, I'll forget later on, and we can comfortably steal development from here. There it is. France is the controller of the papacy, but now I don't really need that. Another war with England is over. This time we're taking London for ourselves, and just so you know, this build of ideas we still have, plus our French ideas, allows us to always have raise war taxes activated. It's worth noting. As you can see, I've launched the construction of a lot of manual factories. For this purpose, I even took 1% loans. Rehabilitation of Joan of Arc, I think it's worth doing. I also believe that Germany has consolidated enough by now, so we'll soon embark on wars, embarrassing to admit but I forgot about Scotland, so perhaps it's time to vassalize them and we'll rehabilitate ourselves by conquering English territories for them. Oh, two centers of reformation right next to me, it's a good thing I'm making territorial claims on them. This is problematic, since triggering the French religious war is really easy. A talented architect, ooh, I prefer building monuments longer and cheaper, because I have a certain monument here that needs to be upgraded to the third level. Eight universities, wonder what that's about, ooh, nice. So, one innovation point for every province that meets the requirements. Why didn't I know about this earlier? Okay, how many did I get? Four points, damn. I think I could have gotten eight. Do you also think that such things should be mentioned earlier? I need governing. Time for another holy war with the Ottoman Empire. Although, alright, since I magically have manpower now and a 200,000 army cap to field, it'll be easier to capture that one province. Alright, I'm conducting this war for two reasons. The first one is obvious money. But the second reason is less obvious. I need a long period of peace, so that the Ottomans' aggressive expansion drops below 60 points. What am I saying? 50. And as soon as we finish this war, we'll start with aggressive conquests. And we really don't want the Ottomans in a coalition against us among European countries. The only ones that can stand in our way are Poland or Moscow. And actually, they have Constantinople here. So add the Ottomans to that list. All right, we secure both sides of the strait and get ready to clash with the Ottomans. Especially since previous wars have had an impact. The Ottomans have scrapped many of their forts. Great celebration, celebration of the monument in Jerusalem. This will let me continue the crusade for Jerusalem. Now we release a new vassal. Jerusalem, or keep it for ourselves. You know what, I want a vassal here, I'm having governing issues, so we need to release them. But they stole my monument, no. In terms of quality, our army is much worse than the Ottomans. Why? Why do we have less tactics? What happened here? Ah! Alright, we've got money, we've got war reparations, that's enough for me. Okay, I transferred all provinces to Jerusalem. Oops, I couldn't take provinces from the Union, I forgot. I need to introduce an absolute French monarchy. This means I need 50% governing and I need to get rid of Provence. Oh my god, this is going to hurt. We start our moves with a quick war against England, a war with England to reclaim territories for Scotland. Counter-reformation, finally! We're going all in on it, we don't want this here. Ah, but before we choose the last one, we have to wait for more countries to join us. God, if this 
France were developed further, it would be such a beast. February 1550. Alright. And now I'm really on the conquest spree. We'll be at war non-stop because I simply messed up with Utrecht. Again, I want these territories for myself. They're supposed to be mine. I don't have a diplomat to attack. Oh, darn it. And there's going to be a big boom in France soon. Just so you know, I'm building a spy network on the Ottoman Empire. Because it's the only country that poses any real threat to me. I want to incur as little aggressive expansion from them as possible. That's why I'm working on the network. Yes, we've taken control of the papacy again. I'm starting the second war in the south to begin making inroads into the Italian region, because here I might as well wait for Sichetin to finish its wars. Hey, I can adopt Hussitism, but I don't want to. Honestly, I'm not even looking at aggressive expansion anymore, because it's going to be one war after another, and the religious war in France has begun. Let's be honest, we all know how the tolerant France story ends. So, let's establish religious peace. We don't stand a chance to end this any other way. Now let's finally turn our attention to the empire. Yes, we need to crush it. No additional claims? Wait, what? I'll show you. I'll show them all. They even converted me. The French Catholic League? What? Hey, they took my capital and they want to change my faith to Protestantism. Never! We'll never do that. Alright, crossing the Alps. Ooh, there's an important decision here. I need to check it out. First, let's oppose the Pope. And honestly, I don't see any change. I'm choosing friendship with the Pope. Wow, it gives me claims on literally everything. Hold on, all these missions now have a condition that requires me to cooperate with the papacy in the conquest of Italy. Not gonna lie, it's a pretty interesting path to take. Okay, this could be a quite intriguing move. Time for the first major war in Germany. And as you can see, we're fighting against quite a lot of countries. Basically, I need to white piece all the southern ones because until I conquer Austria, there's no point. Hey, I gave all this to the Pope! Well, I'm left only with the countries with no flag except for Hesse because I specifically didn't call them in. So we conquer all of these and now we're going to make peace. So we need to recall all my diplomats because there are quite a few countries here. <laughs> the list of friends is getting longer. Awesome! Even Russia will be in it. And now I only have 300% overextended most importantly, still on pause, we're creating a client state in Frankfurt, because why not? We'll name this region Reichland and make it a monarchy because it'll be more stable. Though republics should work better, they oddly don't. And now the most important part, we can attach any province to the client state. Either we create a new one or assign it to the existing one. And the super awesome thing about client states is that they don't have a limit. We can give as many provinces as we really want. Well, there are some disturbances in this country, just a bit. But now these revolts will only trigger in this one nation, not in ours. And it will be much easier to suppress them and we can become iron crowned, whatever that means. How nice, too bad he's so old. But I really don't feel like clicking through all of this to take this mission only with the next ruler. And you can guess that the coalition will now grow and very quickly, so we'll have to declare a lot of wars. Well, it'll be fun, even the Ottomans are getting closer. Oh no, but more importantly, we can now reform our country, which gives us the French absolute monarchy. Wow, it's not that OP. Well, okay, it is. I can be an empire finally. This is a much bigger war, but still not that tough. And now we have to suppress revolts here. And sadly, we we have to do it because this vassal won't have any army. Because there will be a rebellion in literally every single province. In each one. Oh, but it's the first time I see a client state getting our ideas. Besides, they have a lot of their own really cool ones. Hello! Hello! We need to help Poland. We're on our way. On our way. Strange, the Pope doesn't want these lands, but he accepts all from me, so I give them to him. Hey, you won't believe where Utrecht has its provinces. Really, in North America. Alright, from the Austrians, I'm only taking a few provinces for now. And even coring them, because even if I release a client state here, it will simply be more stable. Oh, French alliances will endure. I wonder what that means. Huh? I thought it would reduce aggressive expansion with allies or something. That would be nice. This mission is OP. Look, it's boosting my trade edict, not just 50% but 75% more. Wow! Okay, the fact that I'm trying to make half of Italy papal is slowing down my conquests. It's interesting how the Pope doesn't want them. Uh, I've created another client state up north. I named it Hansa. Well, I hope it'll capture all of the Lubeck trade. Okay, assassination of the Emperor. What? Changing the name from London to Londres. Hey, I feel cheated. Ah, the French domain. Hey, cool, let's loot this. This mission is also mighty. Each province that produces cloth increases its production by one. Wait, wait, wait. So does this also increase my monument level or not? Ah, it had to have 40 development. Okay, guess not. This one has 48. Okay, these PayPal missions, because I have now looked at how they work. They work in such a way that if I have cores on it and I click on the mission, it goes to the Pope. Another condition is that we have an alliance with the Pope. So basically, we can conquer it for ourselves, core it, click on the mission, and everything will still go to the Pope. 
Hey, Tititimur formed Mughals, and here in the region I created Swabia, and now the time has finally come for Stettin. It's a shame to conquer it, but oh well, and we're also nearing the end of our alliance with Poland. Because Poland stands in our way to Moscow, a great battle with Denmark, but we won at sea. Great, let's go claim the capital. Goodbye Poland, you were a good ally. But aggressive expansion did its thing. In the Scandinavian region, we will have a Kalmar. Oh my god, how cool is that? Do I understand correctly that the all power cost here isn't working? Let's Let's see, yes, because it's the opposite, minus 5%. All of Europe is just boiling war after war, but we are occupying more and more neatly. As always, I apologize for not showing anything from these wars, but most of what you see here is just standing on forts, watching them fall and suppressing rebellions. Nothing more. Really? I wanted to kick him out faster than I named him. 85%, you'll definitely fall. Awesome. 250 days of siege for the Inca companions. Don't ask me where they came from, I have no clue. Uh, I think we're in trouble. Alright, the French islands and see the OP bonuses it gives for the rest of the game. I mean, beating the accepted culture, of course. But here until the end of the game, it's minus 5% development costs, culture conversion minus 20%, and concentration of development shortened separatism by 5 years. Very strong. I actually don't know what's better. Let's go with the fleet, shall we? Aha, uh -huh. some religious massacre? Not too good. Yes, let's limit that without a doubt. Hey, I must admit, these islands look pretty good now, right? So colorful. Well, Scandinavia is so beautiful, all blue. It's a shame will be changing its colors. As I would say, this governing will kill me. But this Kalmar is very nice. 420 aggressive expansion with the Papal State. Oh my god, this alliance is hanging by a thread, really. The worst part is that I have to stop conquest for 10 years now to complete the Venetian mission. It will give me the chance to do all those Papal missions and I hope that all of this will be mine. If not, I'll be a bit upset because there's no way we'll keep that alliance. The moment I move on Poland and Russia, we will definitely lose this alliance. And for sure, we'll lose the alliance while taking Austria. Oh, Iceland emerged from Denmark. Interesting. Wait, wait, wait. I might just give Malta to those knights and maybe they'd still be my vassals. Oh, no, no, no. I won't lose another good monument. Wow, I'm taking this one on Machiavellianism. This is great. Could this be the moment of the final war? We'll see in a moment. Keep your fingers crossed. I mean, the final one to execute this mission tree as I still have a lot ahead of me. What's worse is that I could really go on a conquest spree right now. Look at how many unspent points I have. Just because I'm waiting to take these missions so we don't lose the Pope as an ally. Because he has to be our ally. Though I must admit, conquering this and executing this mission when the Pope wouldn't be our ally is incredibly strong. See? Diplomatic relations, reforms, progress. Oh no, that's enough, I have that. But cheaper ships, oh well they'll do. And here again, monarch military skill plus one if we didn't have the Pope as an ally. Incredibly strong. So yes, our ruler will only be crowned by the Pope. What will give us these bonuses until the end of the game? Phew, until his death. Hmm? The Franco-Papal administration, huh? These bonuses are nice. In Indeed, I want administrative efficiency plus 5, that's incredibly strong. Really, after all this I have to send him a gift too? I knew the popes were fond of money, absolutely. I've given them half of Italy already. Now I'll max it out for them. The Kingdom of God, the March of France. Oh my god, how cool. But we won't annex her, will we? Minus 409, aggressive expansion. But now the best part is that we can conquer the rest of Europe. And honestly, I don't care about the aggressive expansion of my neighbors anymore. Well, we'll start our wars with an attack on Stettin, even though my armies are completely in the south, but it doesn't matter. Actually, I don't care about the aggressive expansion of my neighbors anymore, not even the Ottoman Empire. You know, I'm such a fool, I should have taken faster siege ability. So, as long as I have so many points and one more war ahead of us, let's wait too many diplomatic relations already, so I'll have to start annexing my client state soon. But I think you see why I made them, right? I and really, we'll start by integrating the Hansa because I don't really have much left to conquer for them. Let's also convert all countries to Catholicism, their one true faith. Although the centers will still try to mess with us here, but not for much longer, because the era is coming to an end. Okay, our goal will be to capture Dansk, a super important Polish province. And with a heavy heart, but I have to. Unfortunately, Poland is in our way. We have to attack. Oh god, but Poznan is putting up a fight. In the missions, France used to have a Polish submission. I don't know if we still have such missions. Hmm, but I haven't seen anything like that. Oh man, this is just a French deluge in Poland. They don't stand a chance against us. The only thing I can say is that the Polish army is super tough and we'd have a hard time against them in battles. They inflict heavy losses on me. Why does it keep disconnecting, huh? My French troops are retreating because the Poles gave me a good beating. Great, we're bulldozing Poland. But in the end, we just outnumber them by too much. Way too many of us. The Poles won't stop us. This is the French deluge, and we've actually made our way to Warsaw. And I've got Aztec companies with me, seriously, I've got Aztec mercenaries. These mercenary ideas are super cool. I can recruit levies from all over the world. Po 
Poland's last stand. Seriously, they've got nowhere else to fight. The last strongholds have fallen. Oh, there's still one here. But it's, you know, Wallachia. Who would care about that? Actually, I've been so dumb, really. Why am I not converting religious centers? They would stop affecting me. I'm stupid. After all, I control all the territories. Well, Iceland has fallen and I've gotten a few colonies. And now, it's time to deal with Great Russia. And where did Lithuania get the money for three level four forts? How does such a small country have that kind of money? And soon we'll be waging war against the Ottoman. That's actually kind of cool. What did they do to Jerusalem? How did that happen? Anyway, I'm just going to launch a crusade against the Ottomans. Though it would be best to target, I don't know, Tunis, Algiers, Morocco, so we could conquer those countries simultaneously and change the crusade target from time to time. But the priority now is to expand Jerusalem as much as possible. So it's time to prepare for the crusade. Well, I didn't expect to reach all the way to Moscow in a single war. Wow, this is an even bigger wow. The age of absolutism. And what's really waiting for me now is an era of rebellions. And that for several years because I still have 200% overextension and I don't want to create another client state here. But look at our beautiful squid-like territory, right? And while waiting also for the age of absolutism to use that papal bull which lets us continue the crusades after the year 1600. Hey, the religious war is still ongoing for me. Oops, okay. I need to focus on ending it. Nothing like declaring another war on Austria while waiting because this time everything will go to my client states. So yeah, you could say I managed to achieve what I wanted, dividing Germany into three colors. I know, I know, but I just like it that way. All right, time to test the Turkish army in action, whether it's strong, whether it isn't, if we can handle it. Oh, no, it slipped away from me. It escaped. Come here, let's fight. Okay, I have a slightly better army, but the Turk has more cannons. Actually, it's about time to add cannons at this stage. Though no, the ones I have are enough. And just in case, the exploit of accepting separatists and increasing autonomy in all our provinces still works. Remember, when you reduce autonomy, you gain absolutism. And France has so much of it. So much that I basically don't have to do anything. You have to admit the Ottoman burns through manpower really fast. He had 300 sun a moment ago, now it's gone. Aha, offensive and quantity. Well, that's nice. Hansa integrated and honestly I'm adding all the provinces here to the state. Oh, there's going to be a lot of this. I'll have to build courthouses in all of it. Uh, here we have a very important monument that speeds up conversions, but I'm sinking the Ottoman fleet. Wow, I wonder if he had an upgraded army. Army? Navy. Alright, I managed to trap the entire Ottoman army. Well, at least half of it, here on the Iberian Peninsula. Look, the fort still stands. They can't escape. Actually, ah, my fleet sail here and defend, and we finish off this army. Such a beatdown they're getting. Such a beatdown. Beautiful. Time to start the slaughter. Alright, it's done, Ottoman. Let's make peace. Wait, wait, wait. I messed something up here. Hey, do I need to change the culture in these provinces or is it enough just to accept it? No, I literally have to change the culture in 50 provinces to my main one. I probably won't complete this mission. Damn, what a pity. They could devour me, Hansa. This is a ridiculously dumb mission. Only now did I read that Jerusalem must like France at a level of 190. And have that development. We already have the development. But they are stuck at 164 points and won't increase. Damn, 6,000 dev. Or even around 7,000. Because here, we have twice as much Jews to our subjects. This is 100% a world conquest with this. If you would just go on and conquer, conquer, conquer. Especially since I've now taken the administrative idea, which will further reduce our core creation cost and will be nice for annexing our vassals with influence ideas. And in this episode, you can watch how to most effectively create a powerful Spanish colonial empire, which gets tens of thousands of gold every year. In addition, it is present on every continent before 1600, which gives 100% conquest of the world.